Hey YouTube, it's Matt Holmes Reptiles, and we are here with Jackson Rowe. And Jackson, you're going to share your story with us, correct? Yep. I've got uh, kind of a crazy story that I had to share. So it's all this Laciac stuff is coming out lately. We've done videos on it. I know a number of other, I don't want to start naming them because I'll forget something will get mad at me, but everybody pretty much has done a video on the Lacey Act lately because it's currently in a bill going through Congress past the House, going to go to the Senate, so you need to contact all your representatives, and you're going to be able to tell people kind of what can happen if you get sideways on the Lacey Act. So what I'm going to do is just kind of let you tell your story. I may interject here and there to, to pull a little more information on some things, but why don't you just, just kind of start with uh, what got you sideways and kind of how it went. All right, well, I made the stupid decision to import Chinese giant salamanders and some rare turtles into the country back in 2017, beginning in 2017. And uh, they intercepted a package and showed up at my door and with a warrant and found what I had. But uh, obviously I regret doing this, but I was my goal was to start an insurance colony basically, mm -hmm. for the Chinese giant salamanders. I never never sold a salamander, never intended to. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they, they, they thought I was some kind of salamander kingpin or something. So, <laughs> so yeah, you weren't rolling in the money here. You weren't, yeah, you weren't selling animals, yeah. you weren't driving no, Ferraris. Okay, so you were losing money on this, was, and then... I was trying to get careful in my mind. You know, and then they charge you with the felony. So then, kind of. China. Yeah. So then, what happened when they came and they in get China, the they, they, in China, they farm, but uh, it's unsustainable and they're virtually extinct in the wild. So I wanted to get some over here before their inevitable extinction in China. I, or, I think it's inevitable anyway. Yeah. Well, if it's the Chinese but, trying to conserve the environment or human rights, extinction's probably going to happen. Um, I mean, that's been their history. Yeah. No offense to anybody, but that's been the history of that government. So, so once they came in and charged with a felony, kind of what happened from that point? Like, like once that started, what was the process? Uh, had to go to a hearing. Then uh, a couple of years passed, and or a year or more passed, and uh, went to I mean, on probation the whole time. The first year I was on, I had to do drug tests, but they eventually caught on that I wasn't doing drugs, so they stopped doing that. Can't leave the state without notifying where I'm going. Can't leave the country at all without some kind of special permission that's hard to get. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's just been, uh, and the, st the stress of it all, not knowing what the, the sentence is really going to be, is the worst part of it. So. What were they telling you before I'm, you? I'm here talking about the. Like before, Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, before you finish the whole thing, what were they telling you your sentence could be? Like, I know the feds usually say, "Hey, this is what's going to happen to you if you don't play with our game." Like, so what were they telling you it was going to come? Mm -hmm. Lacey Act violation can be up to five years in prison, and uh, I want to sell like a twenty thousand dollar fine mm -hmm. at least. Uh, in this district, they don't do fines for some reason, so I didn't have to deal with a fine. And most likely they say I'm not going to prison. It's probably going to be more probation, but it's really up to the judge. It's it's up in the air. So so you still got this hanging over your head. Still. Right? And, and this is 2022, yeah. and you've been dealing with this since 17. So for five years almost now, mm -hmm. you've had this, like, stress hanging over your head, which I can't even imagine. That's a long oh, yeah. time to deal with that. Yeah. So it's, then you said there's... So I, I warn everyone that if this goes through, it's going to make ordinary people not doing what I was doing, which was wrong. Uh, it's going to make them criminals. Yeah. And it's going to be an unexpungable felony. And you're going to, yeah, it's just going to be a bad situation. And we talk about ordinary people. We're talking about, like, a guy who goes to a show, buys a ball python, and drives it home across the state line. Right? I mean, that could be a felony. Potentially something like that. Yeah. Uh, and now you said there's no fines, but was there any monetary consequence, intended or unintended, about having to deal with this? Yeah. The lawyer costs $10,000. So. 
So even though there's no fine, guilty or innocent, you're out ten grand. Just to try to get a yeah, decent outcome. No matter what, yeah. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you mentioned, too, you caught a felony over this, and it's not expungable. So you're going to have that on your record for life. What are some of the things that come with having that felony? Uh, You're never going to vote again, and you're never going to own guns again, which is disappointing for me because that was one of my other hobbies was guns. I I just enjoyed guns, and now I can't even shoot one ever again legally. So that's kind of heartbreaking a little bit. So I also know when we talked, you said that. Also, can't. I think you were going where I was, so go ahead. Also can't. Yeah, I also can't own venomous snakes anymore. I had uh, a Jameson's Green Mama and a Gaboon Viper, which I had wanted all, all my life. Oh. Had them for about uh, not even a year before they came came mm-hmm. uh, knocking on the door and said, "You have to get rid of these." So they took and that. As long as I'm on probation, at least I won't be able to have any more. And potentially forever it, it could be forever that's a and that i know for me that'd be a big loss like that's something that would sting and hurt even more than the money the money i'd get over once i paid it eventually uh but mm-hmm. that would be losing a right that and the gun right uh i mean my last vote i actually voted for a serial killer for the senate race in one race because i didn't like either party uh so you know sometimes i burn my vote just to be in protest um, yeah. Although I did vote for the one center I could actually get a hold of his staff, which is Moran, who uh, I think they're going to fight against this for us. I hope so. But if not, I'm going to call him out now that I said he's going to do it. Um, but, yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely – so there's a lot of things, I think, that go with this on the back end that people don't realize, like the voting, the firearms, the loss of animal ownership of certain animals anyway. Uh, to you, what's been the biggest loss that you're concerned with that you're going to go through from this felony? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take a felony. I, I don't care. But this, the stress of it all, the, the potential of the prison, and not knowing if that's going to happen or not, that's what's been the biggest uh, problem for me, dealing with this, just the stress. I can imagine. It's five years. I mean, we're, we're five years past the time now, and you're still having to wonder what a judge is going to say. So, yeah. Uh, now, as we've gone through, we're trying to keep this somewhat short because our recording equipment failed once already. <laughs> we had to have you on twice to get this through. Uh, we're Like I say, we're always the most professionals. All of our equipment works perfectly. We never break anything. So anything else that you want to put out there to people so that they understand? And then there's a few things I want to point out as well. But I want you to go first if you want to point out something to the folks watching about why they need to be concerned about what the government's doing right now. Yeah, if, if you own anything that's uh, rare or obscure, they're not going to know about it. They're not going to put it on the white list. You cross state lines with it, you're a felon. No. So, and with that comes a lot of uh, horrible things. So that's why I'm talking about this uh, publicly. Really, I kind of debated whether I wanted to do this or not. About, uh, But ultimately, I contacted a few people. And you know, I'll go on other other people's channels too and talk about this also because I'm, I'm worried about it. I uh, don't want this to pass. I want animals to be available and I don't want people to get in the amount of trouble that I've been in. Man, but, I'm, kind, I'm no. kind of heartbroken. I thought we were the yeah, only ones. I, heard it, but they... uh, I thought we were the only ones you contact. I'm a little heartbroken right now. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. I think the more you get that no, message no, out, the right. better. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, trying, yeah, I'm trying to get this message everywhere. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. For me, the thing that I want to point out and I, I think is important when I talk with you is, you know, you're not, like you said, you're not the kingpin. You're not a guy making a bunch of money from this. You're not the guy that everybody thinks is the bad guy they're going after. You're a guy who was important some salamanders to try to protect the species from extinction. And you had the federal government show up at your door with a search warrant saying, we're going to come in, we're going to take your stuff, and if we choose to, we're going to put you in prison. I mean... Uh, and they have a conviction rate of well in the high 90 percentile. So it's not like you're going to beat these charges yeah. very often. You just, people, you aren't. When you look, and if you don't believe me, the information no, that they're looking at, yeah, you're not going to beat it typically when they get you. So uh, it's, they're, 
they, they'll tell you it's a fair game, but it's their court, their ball, their referee. I mean, let's keep that in mind. It's like when K-State has to play KU. It's their court, their ball, their referee. We're never going to win that. Uh, so it's very difficult. And if it can happen to a, another guy, just like a regular guy, I want people to realize that this can happen to them. They're not immune. Everybody thinks they're three, they're three yeah. layers away from it. They're not. Like, they're one. It doesn't have to be the guy who's shipping in a thousand animals a week. It doesn't have to be the guy who's on the airplane with the Pringle can full of uh, turtles, uh, which I think actually happened something similar years ago to somebody we all know, which I'm not going to... You can watch Locked Up Abroad if you want to know what I'm talking about on that one. But uh, it's, it can happen to a regular, regular guy. And to me, that's terrifying. Yeah. That's terrifying that it is. we're going to be the target. So I think uh, on our last camera before this died... You mentioned, and I want to bring this back up to kind of jog some memory, that if this goes through, it, it's a it's a reality that 10 years from now, there's nothing there but leopard geckos, you know? Right, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's going to be uh, just a, a, rep, a reptile fan. There's going to be nothing, there's going to be no hobby left. Yeah, and that kills... It kills a hobby. It kills an industry. I mean, it. This is something I, I want to. I personally want to do at, at a level that I can supplement my retirement income. Not because I want to be rich, because I love doing it. If I can do it at that level, then I'm a happy yeah. camper, and that's gone. Like it's gone. Uh, yeah. it, it's livelihood. Camping. I have some animals right now. They're all they're all legal now, oh. but uh, I'm trying to breed some of them. Some of them I'm raising up, and I need to get mates for them. And if this goes through, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Yeah, and it, it kills it. It kills it before it ever gets started on the breeding front. And I know that we have people too. Not a lot. We have people yeah. in in Canada and in Europe and even in other countries that do watch us. When you go on other channels, they're going to get some more of that. And what I want to tell those people, you're sitting there going, "Yeah, but that's the United States of America. That ain't over here." But we're such a large part of the industry. If you kill the industry in the United States, you're killing most of the industry in Canada. Yeah. You're killing a lot of the industry in Europe. You know, you're, you're killing it everywhere. The only place that would be insulated from what we do is probably Australia because they don't allow imports and exports out of there anyway. So, like, what we do doesn't affect them because yeah. our reptile market is pretty much carpet pythons and bearded dragons at this point. Uh, and so it, it's such a big blow to the, the global industry. You'll shut down all of the farms in Africa because all the new morphs that are coming out of there they're importing most of that to the United States, and they're importing most of those new high-end morphs to the United States to big-time buyers here. You take those away, those aren't profitable. They're gone. It'll literally kill the industry on an almost global scale is my fear. Uh, yeah. So it's not just I'm our fear. I'm worried this is actually a bad. See, I, I I, I'll be honest. Like it has a good chance of that. I don't think it's going to pass our Senate. I, I really, truly don't this time. But what if if I sit back and go, oh, I don't think it's going to pass. I don't do anything. They're going to keep trying, and eventually they will pass it. It's not just about today. For me, it's about next month when they try it or next session when they try it. You know, uh, looking at the vote in the House, it was so party line. I don't think they're going to have the votes to do that in the Senate with that tacked in there and not run into a filibuster. And I know when I contact and email my senators, I said, I expect you to filibuster this. That is my expectation uh, as a citizen of my state and from a senator of my state. You know, you need to do whatever you can. This is the only legislation I care about. You kill this, you have my yeah, vote. I call, I call both my senators. Did you actually get to talk to one or just somebody I'm like sure. in an office? It was just secretaries, but still, I mean, everyone needs to do that. Absolutely. Email them, email them and then follow it up with a phone call. And if they have a box of do you want contact, Check yes, because that's kind of what I emailed them, and I checked that box, and I didn't get contact, and I'm calling them five days later saying, hey, I sent you this email, and I haven't heard back, and I want to make sure you hear my voice. Uh, I even sent one to one who's on a, not my district, that said, if, if you vote to keep this, I swear to God I will commit my finances and, and all the social media platform I have and every voice I have to making sure that you no longer ever get elected to a public office again. Uh, I don't think she cared, yeah. but that's the truth of the matter. Like that's where I'm at because this is what I'm willing to fight. Uh, yeah. and I think we all need to be there. So anyway, uh, Kurt, anything you want to add? 
before we wrap okay. this up. No, didn't you say too if this passes they get more money to do this with? That's correct. In there, there's a hundred and fifty million dollar yearly increase in the budget for the uh, for them to go and enforce these rules, especially the importation rules. I think that's more dealing with importation. But as things get added, they'll just continue to grow budget. That's what they do. The federal government's a beast. So they're going to take our tax money and then use our tax money to take our animals. God, I love America sometimes. I, I really do, but not that part of it. That part of it sucks. Yeah. Um, so anything that you want to add before we wrap this up? This What's that? Yeah, I just I want to say again, I, I regret doing what I did, and I wouldn't do it again. But it had a silver lining. The, the salamanders are now in zoos, and they're going to be part of a breeding program, or so I'm told. So they're about three feet long now. And you told and me earlier how long they can so get. They're, they're a short. Yeah, they can get up to six feet long. <laughs> it's just mind-blowing. <laughs> I can't even, can't even imagine a six-foot salamander. <laughs> <coughs> so, so I you know the silver lining of all, all this came out and they're going to be bred but even zoos zoos are going to have a problem with the lacing act if this, this passes you know oh yeah that's the other thing they, they will as a matter of fact I got a friend that used to work at a zoo and you know he'll tell you how terrible it is for that um, it, it is problematic you know and I, I think right now it's easy for them because you've got all of the Social media hoopla with, uh, it's just kind of died down, thankfully, involving Tiger King. I'm glad they didn't try to disguise this as a big cat protection because that'll happen at some point too. And then all they got to do is tack in the reptiles and let it ride on the back of that tiger. And hey, man, now we're screwed. Um, and, and I'm not against like regulations and making sure people, you know, who have things can keep it properly and, and all of that. And most keepers really aren't. It's like gun owners. Most gun owners want responsible gun owners. But to come in and tell us no, or to make it such an unattainable goal, it's impossible, is um, a complete infringement, what I feel is upon my, my rights to liberty and the pursuit of happiness, which I think is in the Constitution the last time I looked, uh, for now. We'll probably change that, too, at the rate so. they're going. But um, I do want to say, too, to everybody out there, I, I want to thank you personally, and anybody else watching, take a moment. I want you to think of, about how hard that would be to do what you've just done to come on here and talk about your story. You know, you kind of had to admit that, you know, you got busted and, and all these things that happened and that's not easy to do. Yeah. So I want to say thank you for doing that because I think it puts a face in like some, to what can happen just a regular person. And I think that's very, very important yeah. for people. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it greatly. And I yeah, hope you. we cause some more people to fight against this. So, um, I appreciate it. Anything else you want to add before we go? Uh, just call your senators. Just that's all, all we can do at this point. Absolutely, call them and be annoying. Curry, anything you want to add? I mean, I guess we could hope the president vetoes it, but I'm not sure if that guy can remember what he had for breakfast. So well, I'm gonna. I, mean, uh... <laughs> I guess, I, yeah, I, I will be the first one screaming something about Brandon if he passes that too. So let me get up off of here, and uh, I want to say thank you again for joining us and telling your story. And I hope you can get on a lot more channels so you can get to even more people because the more people that hear this, yeah. the better by far. So thank you again. And guys, we'll catch you all next time.